to the Mod Talk Podcast. I am your host, Jordan Shad, joined always by Andy Driscoll, and Hello. Fish is over there working the keys while well, heading to the bathroom, and we're joined by Nick Thatcher of hey. Malabar Brasserie and uh, he moonlights at Speedwell Tavern as well. That's right. I've been using Moonlight a lot today. Yeah, you have. That's like know. third or fourth time. I think it's, I don't know. But it's the first time this episode, so it doesn't seem like a lot. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, this is your restaurant industry focus group. Uh, we're here to answer your questions, which is great because you guys have been throwing us a lot, and we appreciate that. It makes our jobs real easy. We're not experts by any means, but goddamn, if we spent a lot like of hours. You, you, you can call yourself an expert, man. I wouldn't say. How I'm long have you been in the restaurant business? More than half my life. And mm. how old are you? 34. So, minimum 15 years. Nick, how long have you been in the restaurant industry? Um, at least 15. So I'm that's 30 years yeah. of experience. Dabbled in and out, but yeah. probably about 15 to 20 years. I mean, if that makes us an expert. I mean, would would you, I've been you, doing other shit for about 15 would you, years. I yeah. Would you say you have logged 10,000 hours in the restaurant? Yeah. I would definitely would say that. Then you're A week? Ne- <laughs> 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 that, that's, what, that's what it could they consider an expert. If you've done really? it for 10,000 right. hours, you're an expert. I'd say we've tense prestige in college yeah. many terms, right? I don't know if I could Close break down. That. Yeah, all right, let's just say yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't you. sound too off. <laughs> I get it. You said a number that sounded kind of off. I'm like, I don't know, question it, but I can't really question that. Say, ten hour, say I did 10 hour days, 1,000 days of 10 hours. Yeah, I, I think I've done that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. All right. all right, that makes me, I'm an expert. Yeah. Nick, you're an expert, bro. Yeah. Be proud. It fucking feels good. It doesn't does mean you can't really learn more. An expert yeah. at something, yeah. huh? I, I bet you this I've blown your mind. <laughs> Jordan's just no, like, oh my God. I'm, my mind I'm changing that. my business <laughs> cards right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to work a lot better than expert. my boob inspector shirt. That never panned out, but you know. You getting... did that? No. I <laughs> but, but we are yeah, working I think on thought of that one hash, Hashtag uh, gluten lives matter shirts. That's gluten gotta work. Matter. Gluten lives do matter. Um, you gotta raise awareness. What I, what I am not an expert in is saying people's names. Yes, so, that's correct. Uh, Let's hear you jumble through this first. Uh, name we will this. start with Nandu Awataramani. Oh come on! <laughs> come on! Come on! You're gonna go with a hundred mile per hour fastball? On yeah, the first man. question. Yeah. All right, I like it. I respect yeah. it. I can read the question. What's the sol- the solution to stop employee turnover? Mm. You gotta oh. treat, you gotta treat your staff right, man. Right? I mean, yeah, but at the same time, there's some staff that just they don't they don't know what the fuck time it is, man. Like they they're not. It's true. They're just not up to snuff. They don't get it. Yeah. Well, this is this is because I had a I worked retail. I had to run a retail crew, and. Is it better to have a shit employee show up opposed to no one? Yes. Because my argument was like, yeah, yeah they suck. Said before, like, you have a body. The, the key to like employee turnover is proper training. Yep. And not just like, oh, man, I don't know how to explain it. It's like, you got to be personable. You can just have to be really good with like just talking to people. You have to get people skills and just train them. If you have a really good trainer and a person can do that, who gets everything the point across... Said things clearly, but also not, you know, don't scare the shit out of people, you know what right. I mean? And says the guy's like, I sent him for a bucket of steam. <laughs> <laughs> you got me, you got me. Yeah, yeah. But uh I don't know, man, there's a lot of variables, but that's always been my thing. Like right. you train people properly and just make them feel comfortable at least in the beginning. And then when they screw up or whatever, you you know, follow up on the reprimanding and everything, that's fine. But um I don't know. I feel like the most important thing is that you let them know they're providing value. True. Yes. True. Yes. You know, because it's, it's, everyone's going to screw people. up, but yes. it's the second where you kind of give them the, it doesn't matter if you work here, you're lucky to work here. Yeah. It's that kind of, that will, difference yeah. Between. That it, shit it's, pisses me off, actually. Yeah, it's yeah. the, hey, thanks for coming in. Right. Yeah. You know, this is this was this this was a shitty day. You killed it. Without you, it would have been worse. My mantra, personally, and I've been managing for a while, kind of got thrown into it, and seems to keep getting thrown into it. Is I would never ask an employee to do something I wouldn't do myself, and I make sure they see me doing it. 
That, and that and is very valuable. Right. But I've also had that sort of thing blow up my face because my, you know, where I worked retail, we got specific breaks, mm-hmm. and my thing was if someone's blowing off their break to continue work, and I will also do that. Right. And then I still had those people like kind of turn on me. So it, it's that weird, like, because they felt, they didn't see that, they saw that they thought they weren't valuable. Right. Yeah. And granted, some people you can never make happy. Right. That's just a possibility. But if you show that you generally appreciate their work and their contribution. I try to do that, too. And, and, and I think in a town where we have a lot of restaurants and we're seeing a lot of turnover and stuff, I think... I think we do a pretty good job at Speedwell of retaining yeah. people to the best of our ability. And attrition is going to happen. People are going to grow. Yep. In people this industry, gonna... man, it's it's like that. Because there's some people who, not so much that they feel valued, but they don't value the job itself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Like, oh, there are people that I mean? just do well, it for a paycheck. Just, so what yeah. can you do? It's like, like yeah. I said, there's variables. It's, it's like, not even just the value of the job. They might not even have any self-respect. And yeah, like they harsh, don't. But... There's people who like, don't understand. like Because in this industry there's people that are working to make a living right support a family like you know what I mean and on the same line you have kids that are coming in who just they don't understand like you gotta work to make a living like they're just living at home doing whatever playing video games playing video games doing whatever you know just burning their money which is fine as long as they're working hard I don't care what they spend their money on because it's really like that like some people on the same level that are just like hey I got shit to do I got shit to maintain yeah and everyone goes into a job with a different expectation of what they yeah. expect to get out of the job. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you were talking earlier, like, how you are looking to grow and gain skills. Yeah. Some Constantly people learning, are like, I'm going to go to work, and on Friday I'm going to get a paycheck. Because yeah. that's for a long time it was job. like... That's no way to live, man. I before I really got into, like, cooking, like, I mean, I, I've been in it, but, like, yeah. I was like, this is what I do. And in my mind, I'm thinking, well, one day I'm going to do something else, and yeah. it's going to be great. Mm-hmm. When I finally realized, like, this is what I actually do, it's like, that's when you realize, like... When I started seeing people, it became more popular to be a chef. Mm-hmm. And I seen people really being creative and making it and doing it. Yeah. And making a name, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, oh, this isn't a dead end job. Why can't like, you do that? Why can't I do that? Yeah. Why can't I be creative? Because I've seen people come up dishwashers, never go to school, and then own a business. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, sure, yeah. And have a following and do great. And but, have something you live off. Uh, uh, but on the mm-hmm. flip and side. And re- it's, not, it's not realistic. But yeah. back when I was younger, I was like, that's not realistic. Yeah, right. the you know flip side, the I guy, to that. the, the yeah. guy, or, or say the girl waiting tables, who's making a living, doesn't hate it, doesn't love it, doesn't want it to be their career. They make their money, they provide for their family, yeah. they go home, they build their model train, whatever fucking makes them happy. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing no. wrong with yeah. that at all. You know? No, it's, as it's, long as they're showing up. Yeah, you know, if, like, if you show up and you pull your weight, you know what I mean. Good for you. Yeah, you maintain and you do what you got to do and you stay yeah. on track. I think you're right, though, Andy. I think it's 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 showing. It's the responsibility of the manager or the owner to show their employees they have value because they do have value. And if you're not letting them know that, no one wants to show up to a yeah. job where they feel worthless. You know what I mean? And it doesn't matter how benefit, how much they're getting paid or how awesome the job is or how much fun they have. If you show up and you feel like a piece of shit, like you're not being appreciated, you're not going to show up. Yeah, take the time to let people know the little lesson. things they right. do. That, like, hey, I really appreciate you did that. You, you know, know, you know right. what, Good job. You know right. what, you, when you least expect it, you get a little positive affirmation like that. It goes a long way. Mm-hmm. I know it does with me. So. Yeah. One thing that I think can really get the buy-in from an employee is if they come to you and been like, hey, man, I was thinking we should put the, I don't know, the fucking silverware over here opposed to over mm-hmm. there. You don't just be like, no. Maybe give it a try for a shift. Yeah. Yeah. You know? See how and it works. See how it works. Because, A, they might be right. Yeah. And, B, it gives them like, hey, they fucking listen to me. Right, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they Value were my opinion. Yeah, they were hundred percent right. The silverware doesn't belong over there. Right, you know, even if you don't move it all, move it some, and the, you know, it, it's just if someone comes with an idea, you know, even if you know, even if you know it's not the, the right idea, work it through with them. Yeah, you know? see it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let them experience we'll it, see the aspect a decision. Of it, you know, yeah, yeah. or be see like, well, what do you around. think is good about it, and what do you think may not be good about it? Right. Kind of let them kind of piece it together, and mm-hmm. you know, everyone wants to be like. You want to have pride in what you do, and if you feel like you're helping build whatever it is you're doing, if you actually feel like you put laid some bricks, it feels a lot better. You're proud at the end of the day because you're like, yeah, I'm part of that team. Right, you're part of that team. It's still not your business, but like, oh, hey, you know, I'm the one who decided that we should have Mountain Dew on (laughs) craft or whatever. And And you're not just some grunt that, you know, another number, you know. 
Mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah, value, I think. You're right. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Harrison Hope, I can pronounce that one. Hey, guys, I was wondering what you all think about online reviews. <laughs> you should have listened to an earlier episode. It was a Yelp do, episode. Yeah. Do you think really? they're worth spending time oh, to yeah. gather? Do you find that they actually help your business? What are your thoughts in general on Um. Yeah, I got a lot of thoughts on that. <laughs> um, we all do. Yeah, you know, anonymity in any review, immediately I won't look at it because if the person's not willing to put their face to their opinion, but they have the energy to go out there and berate yeah. my business, um, I'm talking about a negative review, then I have no value for that. Bring back that word value. I have. There's no value in reading an, an anonymous review because it could be a vendetta, there could be... They you don't never know what happened that Right. Day. That guest right. could have asked the whole world and we told him no. Well, and it could be a preference sudden, thing. Like, you just don't like it. Like, we did everything we could to execute it how we do it. Yeah. You just don't like it and that's okay. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But don't go and say, hey, this shit sucks and fucking But overall, blah, blah, blah. because, you know, you guys are kind of talking about the specific bad review. Generally speaking, every restaurant has a bad review. Oh, I yeah. don't care what fucking restaurant Like it, I was saying, like, some people yeah. just yeah. don't like it. Right. Like, and that's that. But... Do you feel that the good reviews based on versus those bad reviews makes an overall like if you go to to the Speedwells Yelp mm-hmm. is that an accurate number overall like overall does that system work I can't remember the last time I looked at it um, but I think out of five, we're at like a 4.4 4 or something like that. That's pretty solid. Yeah, and that's good, yeah. right? Honestly, I mean, the, I don't think there's even reason to even look at the up. Like, you guys yeah. have enough buzz on its own. Like, it, Thank you. Just, I, but that's locally. Now, like, because I do travel on yeah. occasion. And if I do travel, the first thing I do is I True. go on a Yelp and be like, well, what looks good around here? Right. Right. And that's true. And I, I honestly, personally, I am just anti-Yelp, so I'm a little biased on this one. I just don't like the anonymity. Yeah. I, don't, I don't care for people, put it this way, and this is a real grim way to look at it, but society in general is negative. Yeah. And the things that motivate people are when they're upset, they're angry, they're disappointed. That's going to motivate a person to leave a review more than when they're satisfied. Yeah. When someone's satisfied, they've already given you their money. That's their reciprocation that, of that's the That's true, but if that the were... A bad review goes uh, way but, longer than a good review. That you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Way, even it's, it's heavy. Because what happens when I go to, to to Yelp, I will, you know, kind of search the area. I'll be like, "Oh, this restaurant sounds interesting." I'll pull it up. I'll see what their overall rating is. Be like four point five or whatever. That's pretty solid. And then I go and read the negative reviews. Right. Right. Yeah. But I also know that like I can read them and go, "Okay, well, that guy's just being a pain in the ass." That yeah. guy's you know, right. Whatever. But you know. It's once you start getting into the low threes where you're like, okay, this might not be a good yeah, place to eat. That's true. That's, that sounds you know? right. It's true because, it, right, and you grade on that curve where it's like you understand Yelp might not be the best vehicle for restaurant reviews. There is that area of, you know, the negatives might, let's just put it this way, maybe three out of five negative reviews are biased or yeah. whatever. But even then... There is a pattern. Yeah. Right. And so you're yeah. seeing a restaurant that's three stars on Yelp. Yeah, sure. Maybe Yelp isn't the fairest forum, but there's going to be a reason. Yeah. The, your, What'd you do to get down all the way to especially three? Especially if like, you start to then like read the negative reviews and be like, kitchen's dirty, kitchen's dirty, kitchen's dirty, kitchen's dirty. Yeah, there's a like, consistency hey, there. Okay, there like, seems okay. to be an underlying <laughs> right. or like rude staff or, you know, you can kind of... They got roaches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They got roaches That'd be like, really okay. Right. Yeah. Um, would but, you ever leave a review? I, you ever, you ever, you ever done it? You know what? Yeah, but it's all I've never left. There's like four hundred Jordans leaving reviews on Yelp. <laughs> <Yeah, for speedwell. laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm a very, very big advocate for if you have an issue while at a restaurant, bring it up while you're at the restaurant. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm old, call it old school, but to be passive aggressive, leave unhappy, and then run home to your fucking keyboard. That's great. And yeah. then type That's it. That's nuts, dude. You have the people right there. Allow them to try to fix the problem first. I've never been so. I've never been the- upset enough where I had to after trying to have a, a problem resolved, whether it be a contract or a restaurant, whatever. I've never ran home and been like, oh, I'm going to passive aggressively leave a review. I, I just, I don't understand that. I, I would just, never, I, I'll leave a good review. I will never leave a bad yes, review. Yeah, same. You know what I mean? If it's something I don't like it, whatever, it just wasn't that, I'm not going to say nothing. You know yeah. what I mean? Just 
whatever. And that's the thing too is like we're empathetic because we're in the restaurant we're in the industry. industry. Yeah, so yeah, we'll like, just sit there and be like off night, yeah. whatever, no big deal. If it's something really bad, well, like, we know oh. the, the factors and variables that go into it. If I go to a restaurant that's two weeks old and I'm waiting forever for service, like I get it. It's two weeks old, right? Yeah, yeah, two weeks old. Some people don't understand that. Shit out, yeah. They can't wait to go to a new restaurant and slander the shit out of them because <sighs> this wasn't right or they didn't have that or I can't stand that. Like, and like it's like, bro, right? We'll come back in a few months. We just had it with Chick Fil A here in town. It oh, was like God. a two-hour wait. It's fucking fast food. Yeah. Go across the parking lot. Wendy's is right there. Right. <laughs> and it's Chick-fil-A. Right. Like, yeah. how many people I have never had it in their life? Because yeah. it's a, a phenomenon now. Like, right. You know? I get a really good fried chicken sandwich gonna be. Speedwell, and you won't have to wait fucking two hours. For right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, just, I capitalized on yeah. that. I, I just and and right you can get a beer. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And, you can, and we're open on and Sunday. On Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the kitchen on Sunday. Um, Oh, fuck, I was just going to say something. Oh, well, fuck it. I don't, oh. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to make a point. I totally forgot what I was going to say. Uh, Anna Numi says, what is your number one goal when it comes to running your restaurant? Or in a kitchen. Sad that for now. Huh. What was the question again? I'm sorry. What, what is your number, number one goal? goal? Oh, man. At the restaurant. I, I, we're going to have different so outlooks because I'm like executive You're like big now. picture. Yeah, yeah because... Yeah. I know, like, your idea outlook as, like, a line cook, opposed to I've managed before, and, like, the whole that's a whole difference from, like, when you're a, a worker and then you're managing. Yeah. Like, your outlook is totally different. The owner side, I can, it's probably a level up from that. You know what I mean? I think just as important concerns, just different ballparks. It's, you know exactly. What I mean? Yeah. It just, it just gets more amplified. You just, like, you know. When I'm in the kitchen, my goal, clear the board. Clear the board. Yeah. I just want to clear that fucking board. I get tickets. Tickets are on the board. I yeah. just want to clear it. And that's my mission. And make sure nothing gets sent back. And and that's my... And then jump over to Dish and make sure when I get relieved at 4 o'clock, I can get the fuck out of there. That's yeah. my goal. Um, Manage- yeah. Is, is it... The- Management-wise, I mean, it's like... Yeah. Make sure your numbers are right. Your orders are in. Your food's consistent. And you guys aren't pissed off, but they're also not doing shitty jobs. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. Growing is I mean, it, yeah, you know. Management-wise, growing. I, every Monday I do my numbers. I compare it to last year's numbers uh, weekly. And if I'm not growing, like, you're going to have a down week compared to last week. Yeah. There are other things. I'm, you're really digging in and learning, like. Right. I learned a lot doing a couple management stints about how, like, how it works. Yeah. So maybe one day I could probably own something and I get it. And some things I'm like, damn, I don't know if I want to deal with that. Or like, And then some things I'm just like, I get it. Like, But you care a lot more. Oh yeah, way more. Yeah. Like yeah, some do. things, real like some things I didn't think mattered before really matter. Like you know what I mean? So stupid, you know, right? Things that you thought that things were like, I was like, I, whatever. Yeah, why is my manager? I'm gonna go eat another though. burger today, or whatever, and not bring it. Like I'm even manager, that shit matters, right? I've always been that. my biggest insignificant thing that drives people crazy. And I'll we have a big staff meeting on Tuesday, so I'm gonna tell my front of the house staff this: salt and pepper shakers. I'm all about tipping points. And if my salt and pepper shakers aren't full every day, I think a customer sits at that table and they see a half full salt shaker and they're like, all right, well, that hasn't been taken care of today. What else aren't they fucking mm-hmm. doing? And I freak out over you it. You know, it's funny. is I, I heard a story about, you know, everyone's heard that story about that, that band that wants M&Ms but not green ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I heard a really interesting story from a, a management perspective, like the band manager and it was that that rider was in the contract, so when they got in there, they could look in the bowl and be like, they fucking missed that. What else did they, you know, are, is the safety not right? Is the sound fucked up? You Attention know, did you detail. read the, the rider? That kind yeah. of thing. So it's just like that instant you can look at and go, you weren't fucking listening. Right, and and I and, and picking out colored M&Ms is a pain in the ass. All I'm asking is for them to make sure that the salt and pepper shakers are clean and yeah. filled every day. Yeah. And it's the easiest thing. When I first walk in the restaurant, sometimes 6 a.m., like today I was there at 6, first thing I do is walk around the whole dining room and I look at all the salt and pepper shakers. Yeah, you can glance over and go, okay. And there were two. Why, there were two not full today. Why, so. did, why didn't they get to it? Right. You know, did they miss two? Yeah. What you else? Know? Yeah. You know what, you know what else I judge though? Like, kind of like that though. Bathrooms. 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 Great it's like, point. If your bathrooms ain't clean, right? Like, that's like the like. Come on, man. Yeah. You go in some place, you got a fucked up bathroom. Yep. And like, right? I'm like, mm, I don't know, man. You but that always, and... that's always a thing with me. Like, uh, yeah. You don't clean your bathroom. Yeah. Like, you hear like. Right. Else you don't clean your fry later and you're watching the staff use that bathroom, and you're like, not, not only are they using it, but 
they're using a dirty bathroom, but they're not cleaning it either. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah that's a gr- oh. bathroom's a great point, too. I just Absolutely. feel like the place is only as good as a bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> as weird as it sounds. No, it's, it's like, yeah, fucking that's true. Weird. Yeah. It's, that's it's, a great tipping point. You know? That's a really good point. I'm going to start looking at fucking yeah. bathrooms now. Fuck salt shakers. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, Daryl Gray says, uh, a local restaurant owner in Baltimore confessed to me and said, Groupon is killing their business. Ooh. Is that true that Groupon is a restaurant killer? Uh, what do you hate or love, or do you even use Groupon? I, uh, I think Groupon is, when it first came out, was real cutting edge, and it was a great way to take like a dead part of your It'll season. It'll invigorate and, your business. And, yeah. yeah, but now I look at it, and it's almost like the last resort before well, restaurant. Now you get El Chipos coming in. You bring in a certain demographic of people that are just, yeah. you know. And that's true, too. That's true, too. I don't know. I look at Groupon now, and I'm like, I think I've most seen... restaurant people know that yeah. Groupon brings in that weird clientele, the, the penny yeah. pinchers, they're yeah. not going to tip well, that's going to upset your servers. Yeah. They tip on the discount Lemonade amount. Water. Yeah. But water it's, type people. So I think when I start seeing a restaurant do Groupon, I'm like, uh-oh. I'm like, So you think it's trouble. kind of like them just trying to that pull I mean, how does it work? Yeah. Do, you, do you have to like pay to have it, have the service? Yeah, we did it at Rose Alley when I worked there. Yeah. And uh, it was early on, so they were just trying to get people, people in. in. Yeah, so we were trying to do that at Quahog, and they were like, "We're not doing that." Like, we don't want yeah. to pay them in this. You know. pay? I don't know what the rate is. I can't remember. I wasn't managing at the time because that seems like it's really expensive. Because if you're paying them, and then you're discounting and then you're the product, discount it. and then in turn, what you just get the yeah, I think yeah, they get a percentage of some of how many Groupons are bought. So you're yeah, that's how it works. So no. say you got ten percent off Groupon, yep. they get. A five percent on top of that, so they sell the Groupon and they get five percent of those sales. Of the, it's it's then, promo, so yeah. yeah so you're so losing fifteen percent. Fifteen percent, correct, yeah. correct. Um, and they'll cheap, encourage to you to people. do. Yeah. <laughs> they encourage you to do a bigger discount. Too, I can't even front. I use Groupon sometimes, and like, yeah, I didn't even, like you? really even think. Not so much for food. I didn't but, like, think this, about it. Like I tickets shit. and stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, don't I think it works better for that than it did for when it first came out. I think a lot of restaurants were all over it, but I think it works better now for like family stuff. Events. And That's what like I use that. it for. Yeah, because it encourages you to do things that you don't normally do. I think yeah. I, went, I went like indoor mountain climbing one day mm-hmm. off a of Groupon. Yeah. I would never do that. Never think to do that. Right. So it kind of guides you into something. So it was like yeah. something different, and it was like, oh, that's cool. See, you that's know? cool. That's I think what it's better stuff built like for that. Now. Yeah. And I don't really look out for the you know restaurants and stuff. You can get massages and go to the spa, whatever. Like, yeah. Whatever, you know. I want a massage. I just ask Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> These meat puppets. <laughs> <laughs> meat puppets. <laughs> These fucking meat puppets. The hamburger helper, dude. Look at. It. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, Becky Lafranchi. Lafran- uh, a stumble. What is your favorite interview question? I'm assuming she means for like a new potential employee. Why do you want to work here? <laughs> that's exact. That's Why weird. us? Yeah. And then is, usually they're just like, I don't know. Like we had just interviewed somebody yesterday, and I asked him, and he had like a deg- a master's degree in political science, and I'm like, Why do you want to cook in my kitchen? And he's like, I don't know. I've been out of work for a year. I need a job. I'm like. Yeah, that's kind of the wrong answer. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I, you know, not that we're really hiring somebody, like, you know, to run the place or anything. Like, yeah. we're hiring a short order cook, but still, that's like, you know, say something nice that's about the, best, the place. That's the, that is the best thing to ask, though. Like, why do you want to work here? Yeah. What, what, why do you choose here? Like, what's your end game? What's your goal yeah. here? What's, what do you see yourself I'll throw getting? I'm throwing weird questions, here. too. Like, so what are you watching on Netflix yeah. now? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you want to, you know, know them. Right. Vibe them out, make sure yeah. they're not weird. Yeah. Yeah. And we were talking today about, like, you know, like, go right on their social media, like, yeah. like, Facebook. Oh, yeah. I feel like every company does that now. Yeah. Before, I'd be like, that's crazy. Like, when you start hiring people, like, that's the first thing you want to do. Yep. Right. I don't even know the per- Like, I'll just see the application. Oh, yeah. Type in the name. Like, so. Especially a lot of yep. places yeah. now you can apply right through Facebook. Oh, yeah. yeah. So all you got to do is, like, click, <laughs> and you're there. And you're like, why the fuck is that your profile picture when right. you're applying for a job? It's them blowing weed smoke into a camera. Yeah. But you know, it's legal, but like, but come on. that's what you're proud of, like, that's yeah. your but this is what this is how people perceive you nowadays. This is yeah. like, this is how the world works now. Yeah. Like, your social media is a, a thumbprint of you. Yeah. Correct. You know what I mean? So it's like... And if you don't want it, us to look at it... And you might not be exactly there. that person you're perceived on there, you know? Right. Like, you go on Instagram, you see all types of stuff, but it's like, I know that person. They don't look like that. Yeah. Do that. You know yeah. I mean? yeah. But, um, 
But that's just how the world works now. It's yeah. just we just here, but we can't change it. But the perception of everything is just Facebook. Right. You know what I mean? It, and it's, fu- it's funny. My, you, you always hear these people complaining, you know, oh, they're, they're mining our, our uh, data or whatever. And yeah. I'm like, it's shit you put on there. Yeah. Like, if you don't want it out there, don't fucking put it on there. Exactly. I'll judge you on your memes. That's what <laughs> on I'm your memes? You, on your memes. Like, what type of memes you looking <laughs> well, well, at? What meme did you post last week? Yeah, I don't like that. Uh, oh. Well, your memes are out of date. Nah. <laughs> I, oh, uh, <laughs> when I worked for corporate retail, we had a specific list of questions. Yeah. Like, we... we Corporate's like that. 100% right? not allowed to be like, hey, what are you watching on Netflix? Like, that was not yeah. allowed. Um but uh, my favorite question to ask was on the list was, tell me about a time that you made a mistake and how did you resolve it? Because mm. you heard some fucked up stories. That actually like, is pretty good. Why yeah. are you telling me this? Because that is not <laughs> a good thing. Like Some guy's like, oh, I was painting this house and I spilled paint like all over the place. And you know, I managed to clean it up before anyone noticed. And I'm like, okay, don't know, like... Great. Yeah. You cleaned it up. No, this is like wild stuff. Like yeah. something like, I don't think you're too comfortable here. Like, yeah. oh, one time I was in the bathroom and I fucking OD'd and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, bro, what? But <laughs> in, in, interviews are some of my favorite Good things thing to my do. my boy came. And- because you're just like, what the fuck is wrong with people? <laughs> I've had people drop F-bombs. I've had people answer their cell phone in the middle. Been like, ooh, Oops. one second. Old dude, too. Not even like. Really? Uh, yeah. Like, older. Hang on a second. Yeah, no, I'm in an interview. Blah blah. I want to be like, not not fucking anymore. Right. <laughs> yeah, we're like, done yeah, we're here. Good here. Yeah, you know what we got a lot lately is people just don't show up. Uh, I, I noticed that. that. It's fucking crazy. I'll book ten interviews and, and one maybe, will show up. Yeah, yeah, dude, we got lucky. We had like uh, Maggie and I had twenty interviews lined up for server positions like four months ago, and uh, in two days. So we didn't do them all in one day. It was Friday and a Monday, and About two 20? showed up. Two, two out of twenty. She showed up, and we hired them both. They're great. Yeah, like, it, it couldn't have worked out better, it, you know. But what the fuck? Dude? I had a guy show up three hours late. Yeah, what'd you do? He's like, oh, uh, you know, he's telling me some fucked up story about like, it's here in Plymouth. He's like, oh, you know, on the bus, and I was on the wrong bus. I'm like, fucking bus. Where bus. the There's hell? There's only one bus. Yeah, right. <laughs> and and he's like, I understand. Dial a ride. Dial a ride. Like you I called call, them. Call Uber. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, he's like, oh, I understand if you don't want to interview me. I'm like, good. <laughs> like, you said it, you, you said couldn't it. make it onto your interview on time. Fuck work. Yeah. yeah. Then the, what happened to the kid the other day? He got into a car accident. Yeah, he got rear-ended. <laughs> and you know, yeah, but you know what? He showed up. Did Sios tell you what happened? No, no. Yesterday he showed up. At, he was supposed to be there at eleven. He showed up at four. <laughs> so what was his fucking excuse yesterday? And you know what? He used to be a bouncer over at BBC. And he fucking was supposed to work for Seahawks one night when Seahawks was bouncing over there. And he, he no call, no showed. Show and Seahawks ended up having a cover anyway. So the dude shows up for the interview yesterday, not knowing Seahawks is running the kitchen. He goes to introduce himself and he goes, Oh, what's up, dude? Like, <laughs> like, you knew immediately oh, he wasn't getting, getting that job. job. <laughs> not only did you show up five hours late, but the guy you went to go dap up when you came in. And you left hanging. Yeah. yeah that go that is the. Just give you notice. Yeah. Quit like a normal person because yeah, right. you don't know where it's going to fucking burn you. Dude, no. I love it. I love That's it. hilarious. See, I was telling me that story this morning. I'm like, dude, how good did that feel? He goes, oh, dude, the guy was shaking. Like, it was fucking awesome. <laughs> That's mad for you. Okay, uh, here's a good one. Uh, Gopal Kamath. That's the name. <laughs> you did okay. Yeah, all right. What's your secret sauce behind increasing restaurant sales? Any specific strategies you are implementing that are working? Hmm. That Jordan's... You're the man for that. Marketing, man. Mar- Jordan's marketing <laughs> is the best in town. Thanks, dude. I will, like, I'm not just trying to fucking blow smoke. Like, you really do kill it. Thank like, you. you do your thing. You got to stay relevant. You have your angle, and it works. And that's the thing, consistency, right? Yeah. Like, I'm honest. I don't fucking try to act like we got something we don't have. I, you know, I, I, uh, the place has got a voice. I don't know if it's necessarily it's my a lot. voice. It's, it's a lot. There's things going on that, like, you stay up with current events memes all yeah. types of shit like you know what i mean and you post and like you know something's going on it's not you're not seeing the same ads right on facebook all the time you know? you're not seeing the same things in your feed every week it's something new thank it's, you it's things going on so you know it's like it's popping you know it's I mean? become my full-time job yeah. the marketing part and i didn't think that would happen yes yeah. and, and you do it too Andy. Yeah. but it's yeah. fun i bet it's mad it's fun right yeah it is it, it looks is. like it's fun it's shit. a lot of pressure <laughs> sometimes though because when you're on a good streak 
and you yeah. get a lot of good posts, and you know you're you fucking just crushing it for like four or five days in a row. Yeah. And then you're like, fuck, I, got, I have no ideas today. No, I've always admired you, that. My audience, they're going to be so disappointed yeah. today. And, and that's one of the things that I think some businesses, restaurants and, and other businesses kind of forget. Like, they get very sales pitchy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, Jordan, I think, does a great job of that, where it's like, it's not always a sales pitch. Sometimes, like, it's a, like, I fucking loved your 4th of July. Make sure you leave out milk and cookies for Captain America. Yeah. I, I hope everybody did that. Because it's just <laughs> it's funny. America's ass, You know what baby. I mean? But, like, you, um, <laughs> but people are this on. There's been so many of them. Like, you did the uh, season two of Strange Things came out. Stranger, he did Stranger Wings. Wings. And I was like, oh <laughs> shit. Yeah. But but and he had the Kofi face the off. Oh, the, oh, I remember the Kofi face off. Yeah. Trump yeah. fucked up that tweet. Yeah. I may come up with a Chipotle coffee sauce called Kofi So I'm like, like, what else can fucking Kofi be? But people them. know there's a presence and there's shit going on. There's stuff right. yeah. moving. So but like, it's like I when like you're that. on Facebook, it's about being entertained, not being yeah, advertised. Right. Exactly. So, so if it's entertaining, it doesn't feel like advertising, but you're still like, oh, this is funny. I'm going to share it. Like, cause some people right. will put a bunch right. of and money to boost the posts, you. but it's the same post they had six months ago. Right. Yeah, I don't want to see that. Right. You know what I mean? Like, we get it. Yeah. Yep. But to know that, like, there's just something new. Like, something's happening. Something's happening. And you got to be relevant. It's, it's very relevant. tough because, yeah. like, uh, my day job, I work for a company that is very much like, well, you know, it's all business. And it's like, I get it, but your social media feed's kind of dull. Yeah. yeah, and you can't be dull. No, you gotta be. You, you gotta poke fun at yourself. You gotta just be real, man. Like, I don't know. I, I just, I try, I try to piggyback what's already being talked about. So, right. if, so if there's something that's already, tr- I guess, trending is the word, right? Yeah. If something that's trending, like the World Cup the other day. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, we had the World Women's World Cup, and I was like, wow, the fucking trophy looks a lot like a chicken wing. <laughs> so I took a picture of one of my chicken wings. I put it on the side of the trophy, and I said, "What could go together?" You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Stupid little shit like that. And people pay companies for this—a lot of money. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. <laughs> just, like you know what I mean? So it's. I, it, I, I give it, you a lot of credit. It, it's for that, thank you. and that's what it, it. Even like some of the big companies are doing that. Like, um, oh, I can't. I can't remember. There was one like fast food chain where you could be like, "Oh, roast me," and they would make fun of you. Oh, and it's oh, like, oh, but it's like that's great. what social the media is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. <laughs> But that's like, great. Social media is supposed to be entertaining. Right. So like, yeah. if you're just advertising, you're kind of missing the boat. Yeah. And, and that boils down to like, what does you know does the company that you're working for get that? Right. You know, and that that's kind of the. the that's trick. a great point, dude. The whole entertaining thing. I never even thought it's, about it's that. It's You're already it's, giving them something before they made a purchase. If right. you're entertaining them ahead, they're more likely to come in and support you because you've already well, made the, them laugh. Or, and, and the it's, most it's, important. See, I'm not even looking at it that way. I'm looking if it's funny and it's entertaining. People want to share it. And show it to their friends. True, and but that's the goal. It's True. just like yeah. the A-frames out front of like you know the bars, like like Jimmy, like oh my gosh, nuts. Those. You know what I mean? Like oh, yeah. Dan Mahoney like, used to kill like, him. Yeah. They chalkboard over there. Yeah. Like, they, you know what I mean? Like that's mm-hmm. the type of shit that works. That's what yeah. you connect people. because yeah. you're like I. You get nothing. There's nothing that connects people more than laughing at the same joke. Right. I guess you know what I mean. So when they feel like they're a part of the joke. You know, then they're more likely to come out and support yeah. and just keep you in their thoughts. Even if they're not running over to Speedwell and spending money because they laughed at something I posted on social media, it's in their head. They're going to talk about it with their friends. They're yeah. going to share it, like you said. And like, Yo, you I never even really thought about that. I just like, I don't know. I've always looked at it like, just be honest. And like, anytime you're pumping your chest out and, and, and saying, buy my shit, yeah, people yeah. are tending to do the opposite. They're like, they but don't you, want to support you, Yeah, that. you're right. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, like, fuck you. I'll buy whatever burger ever. I want. Da, 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 da. You don't know like, shit. You don't know me. Like, burger's pretty okay. Come try it. You know what? Don't fucking tell me what to do. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, your personality comes through in the posts. Right. And I don't know why people like you. I, don't <laughs> I still fucking don't but, know. Ask my I wife. I mean, it, it comes through, and it's honest, and it's genuine, and it's fun, and that's the vibe of Speedwell. Yeah, that's what we're going for. You know? And Thank it, you. It, that, that carries through because your feed is funny and entertaining. So just, it's its own entity. Just remember you. when you're on Facebook and the things that you think are funny and entertaining and catch your that your business should be projecting that same vibe. Right. Well, there's a know? vibe there you can't get anywhere else, and that's honestly right. essentially... Back to that other question for the goal, like have your own thing. Yeah, you gotta have yeah. a person. You gotta. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Just have your own thing. You know what I mean? And that's and that's great. It's, there's so many places you can go, but if everyone's their own thing, you'll be all right. You know right. What I mean? What's the quote from Tommy? Why you're not just selling auto parts? You're selling yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one comes from uh, Mars Mayer. 
That's not a real name. Yeah, it's not. A, it me. shouldn't be with this post. Is he like in fucking Maroon it's, 5 uh, or something? Like, what is the weirdest gift a regular has given you? And they sent a picture of a corn dildo. That's just a... Is that really a dildo? I don't know. It it's says a, a corn. corn dildo, and it looks like it's made out of plastic. That's my worst nightmare. I hate corn, for anyone that know. doesn't know. I, I don't think they're Ooh. asking if you're requesting this. I, what is the weirdest gift a regular has given you? I just can't get my eyes off that corn dildo. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Sorry, I'll, that could be some kid's I'll put toy. It away. Like, yeah, it's like, it's like a dog what toy, right? The... That's not a corn dildo. That's like a dog oh, toy. Oh, man. Yes. Oh, Carl oh, Heine has just shit. made it. shit. Carl. So, buddy. I, what I is came the... because I thought the podcast was over. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the weirdest gift, gift a regular has given you? Yeah, go ahead. Jump in front. Oh, yeah. Carl. I'm sorry, what was the question again? What is the weirdest gift... A regular has ever given you? Uh, I'll be honest with you. Nobody gives me anything any. <laughs> ever. You've never received a gift? Well, I mean, like disease-wise? <laughs> <laughs> and he wonders why we schedule oh, these man, when he can't he make got it. Herpes <laughs> of, <laughs> got herpes of Valentine's Day once? Let me see. The weirdest thing. I would say a Hawaiian shirt. That's not weird. That's not weird. That's, That's actually very awful. It, it was the only gift. It had to be one or the other. Jeez. What about the cardboard cutout? Are you? Yeah, that wasn't really a gift. That was um, a sort of a yeah. Prop I'm not really sure what to call that. Yeah, props. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I've. I can't think of a gift I've ever gotten. No. You know what? I have a uh, 40 ounce liquor flask that was given to me by a regular. I mean, it's not, it's not weird, weird, yeah. But I mean, who's gonna drink forty ounces of fucking booze? And it has like it insults you. It has like the level goes down, so it'll say oh, like yeah. you're an asshole if you don't drink this much or <laughs> whatever. Like, I don't know. I mean, that's it was kind of a more of a novelty, a cute gift. I got a really nice fucking beer mug that I still use to this day. I've had it for like six years now, but never a corn dildo or anything like that. Yeah, you know? I can't think of any gifts like that. Yeah, good. I, I, uh, I had those a you give me a case of wings for free. That was cool. How about this? Challenge <laughs> listeners of people of Plymouth, bring gifts to Carl, Andy, myself, Nick, and yes, even yeah. Fish. The weirdest fucking thing you can think of so we can talk about it. And just not this corn answer. dildos. Just yeah, not corn, corn dildos have been taken. I feel like you're opening up a whole shit. I know, I feel like yeah. we're all going <laughs> to like, get like, yeah, corn dildos thrown at us. You're like, this is a good <laughs> idea. And then like in two Again, weeks, you're like, be, like seriously, can dildos. you delete that episode? <laughs> I, I, am, I don't know what to do with all the corn dildos. Yeah. Seriously, I, <laughs> I can't even throw them away anymore. All right, uh, Mandy Clark. How about this guy who is actually a quote in in the industry Makes me wait almost three weeks before he bothers to come uh, pay me back. Looks like he left an uh, open tab. He said he personally covered it because he knew the guy, and the guy knew that this person covered his tab, uh, and doesn't even tip him. Wait, so he took three weeks to pay his tab and didn't tip? And didn't tip. But he paid the tab. Yeah. That never happens. He says, yeah. but he's also in the industry. So the, the question boils down to, now which way will this go? The fuck that guy, or the who cares, it's only 11 bucks. So, I walk into your place, I run up a tab of $11, walk out for whatever reason. You know, you pay the $11, whatever, it takes me three weeks to come back. And I don't even bring you a corn dildo. I'd be, I don't know, I don't <laughs> if it's 11 bucks. I feel like it's like, 11 bucks. If yeah. You, the fact that it, you it, came back and paid it, I'd be like, oh, Well, how many times sweet. have you walked out on a tab? Many. Uh, you know what? I, I did it actually recently. Just because you don't think of it. <laughs> and it's usually like a weird circumstance. Like, I'll get a beer <laughs> at, at the July bar. 4th? I can't remember what day it was. Hell yeah. It, it's usually like a weird circumstance. Like, was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> like, I've gotten a beer at a bar, and then, like, we've moved over to a table. And then, like, the next day I'm like, oh, shit, I think I might have still had an open tab at the bar. Like, they didn't transfer it over or whatever. Right. And um, there was, like, one time I forgot my wallet, and John Luce to this day gives me shit about it. And he was, and I live so close, I'm like, I'll just go grab my wallet. I was like, no, I'll just pay it, you know, tomorrow, whatever. Right. But then you walk in, it's like, oh, you got your wallet on you? Right, right, right. You'll never, I mean, you'll yeah, never hear the end of it. No, but, you know, it happens. I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's that big of a deal. If they didn't pay the tab, and they were in the industry, and you, you see them around, and you're like... Unless you're that guy who doesn't have a wallet all the time. Who's oh, that dude? He just yeah. got caught again, didn't he? At Hillary, they, got, they call the cops and everything. 
Yeah, there's this fucking guy I going around town. Here. He would order himself like a three course dinner, rack up like an eighty dollar tab, and then at the end of the tab, he'd be like, "I don't have my wallet," and he would just never. He was doing it notoriously. Dude, he did it he everywhere. Really, everywhere. everywhere. Wow. wow. Yeah. Uh, didn't, they, didn't they arrest him at um, Sushi Joy? Yeah. Yes, they did. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Everywhere I seen you at Sam's. Yep. So that's a big deal. Yeah. Eleven bucks from an industry person. Oh, there was like a buzz about it. Everyone. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it also depends on rant. if you know the guy. You clearly know the guy, well, right? So, <laughs> is it like is it the eleven dollars that's griping your ass, or Principal. do you not like the guy? Well, I was going to say the guy <laughs> came back and paid the eleven dollars. Whether I like him or not, yeah, at least he came he, back. He and thought paid about it more than yeah. you did. I guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's a good point. You know what I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah I, so I you gotta, you gotta I give him all about it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, this one there's no name on. Sweet. Uh, one of the places I work for is looking for a POS system. What is the best system out there? Mm. We are thinking, we're kind of thinking of something with a tablet or iPad. The, I just switched to That's Aloha a like four years ago, and I fucking hate it. So don't do Aloha. It works, but it's expensive. The newest one I've dealt with, which actually it's good, but it has its flaws, is uh, Rebel. They use it at Corb. Okay. It's all um, iPad based and everything, but for me, like in management wise, like you can track everything in real like you know what I mean? Like it's, right. I don't know if it's cloud based or what, but I can go on my phone and see my numbers. I can see, you know, what's sold in real time, you know what I mean? What you know, all that. Right. Um go in your punches, like everything. I don't know. It's that's awesome. It's different. It seems like there's more and more tech yeah. out there. Like there's was, a lot more going on like that. Yeah. I was uh, hanging with um, Kenny from Second Wind, and whatever app they were using, he could pull up and see like every open tab. Of Square. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. use Square, which is like the original tablet-based POS system. Yeah, and it's it really is crazy how it's so simple. I use it for when I do catering gigs on yeah. like my iPad and my uh, phone, and it's so simple. And you're almost like, why? it's way why? too easy. Almost. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's too way easy. too like what's damn. It missing? Like what? What am I? Na- I, I don't understand what. I mean, I- you want to go in and do counts of whatever you have left. At yeah. Counts of I'm about to run out. You want to change pricing? Um, putting in specials like real quick. Mm-hmm. Boom! You just I can do it on my phone. I can do it on my computer. Yeah. The only downside is it's like the velocity of food coming in. Like the girls are right at the table. They boom, 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 send. Mm-hmm. And then you go to the next oh. one and so you're getting slammed in the kitchen. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. hit a button and make food happen, but they can hit a button and just. That's true. Print, you know what I mean? And so, demand food. <laughs> yeah. And that's a lost art, too. And this you know is something I mean? I'm going to bring up at my staff meeting on Tuesday is this um, servers are becoming more of food runners than they are servers. Like, they're yeah, not yeah. talking to their tables, they're not creating an experience there. Get them in, get them out, bang, bang, which is great for business, too, when you can turn over tables quick. But the kitchen gets fucking annihilated. Yeah. There's no, there's no delay. There's no like. It's just place fills up, kitchen fills up. You clear the board. You think you're all set. All those tables get up. They fill back again. Boom, board's full. Where it used to be back in the day when I started in the kitchen, it would stagger a little bit more. Yeah. And these new POS systems. Some of these girls, they'll, they'll take all the orders and then put them all in. Yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks. It's like. Yeah. 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 I don't give a fuck. Is that ready? But then I'll be like, okay, when it's time for you to pick all this shit up at the same time, I'm gonna sit here and look at you and watch how silly you look. Uh, (laughs) But you know, that's also part of the service. Is not just you know, okay, your food's right and quick, but you know, do you feel welcome? Right. Take a minute and you know, shoot the shit. I agree. You know, those the those, and I'm sure they look at it as a volume type thing. Is like oh the more tables I crank through the more tips I get right, but if you can blow away a table and get a great tip, they're gonna come back. Right. Yeah, they're, a they're gonna come back and b you're not doing as many tables. You're gonna not have to work as hard. Right, you know, be it's personable. A, it is, and it's a hard stigma to kind of. It almost contradicts itself because you you feel like you're doing a good job by getting people their food quick and accurately. You think that's why you're getting tips. So it. You know, you don't really think about the customer experience other than that, like the education, the getting to know, the, the like you said, making them feel welcome. That's the hard way. Yeah. That's the one that takes longer, but that's really, those. that's where you get return people. That's, that's where you get, you get people return back. people. That's where you get regulars. That's how you get corn dildos, Jordan. Corn dildos. That's why I have no <laughs> corn dildos. We're serving our food too quickly. Yeah. You're, you're not making the people feel like they can come back and give you those things. <laughs> 
corn dildos. All right. Uh, I should have trolled on that one. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Uh, Jill Burgess, how many of you have witnessed something at work and had to go to court for being a witness? And I have a funny story. Ooh, no, you know, no, I, I do. We'll kick it off, Andy, because I don't know. Well, it doesn't directly involve me being a witness. Uh, so, uh, it's no surprise we run Inebriart. And we have this prize package. Every time we get to a certain number of new likes, we give away a prize package. And we were hitting, I think, a thousand followers. So we try to make it this huge, you know, prize package. And we worked on a lot. And we had donations from all sorts of people. And so we chose the winner at random. And it happened to be a bouncer that Jordan had. And so I sent Jordan this text message. He's been like, hey, man, does this guy work for you? He's like, yeah, he's one of my bouncers. And I'm like, oh, can I get his contact information? And you're like... Yeah, sure. Why? And I'm like, you know what? Maybe you should just send it to my attorney. And Jordan got like, what the fuck, man? I'm like, no, nah, I'm just messing with you. And he got super pissed. And he's like, yeah, he had to go to court the other day. I'm like, oh, my God, man. I was oh, just no, joking. I <laughs> I'm like, Chuck. Yeah, I'm like, I was just making a joke. And it just happened to be a really poorly yeah. timed joke. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm like, wait, where is he? I forgot all about that. Yeah. Yeah, that mm. was fucked up. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> that's, what, you know, that's one of those things that. You gotta be careful making jokes because sometimes they're not always funny. <laughs> well, just what the timing, you know? Timing? Yeah, it's all in the timing with jokes. Yeah. I'm just picturing a bouncer like throwing someone in the middle of the street and like that getting injured. And uh... Man, I miss Chuck. We need to bring him back. He's, he's <laughs> solid, dude. Shit, yeah, yeah, I like that guy a lot. He visits every now and then. I see him coming. Yeah, yeah I'd like to have him on this one. Uh, he, would, he would have some fucking. Oh, hell yeah. Time. Was he from Rose Alley too? Or? No, no, no. He just kind of He came in through another guy that was working my dog who I fired. He said, actually, fuck it. He was doing his buddies with Aaron St. Patrick's Day saying some fucked up shit. But, uh, but yeah, then we got Chucky through him. But, yeah. So, so have you ever had, you know, to go to court over something, legal ramifications? Not that I can remember. So, it either, if there even was like a thread of it, it never came to fruition. I feel like there has to be a couple close calls in there somewhere where someone threatened to make it go to court or like, um, I mean, there's been plenty of, I mean, over. I mean, do people sue you about food, sir? Like, no, but you know what? There's that other aspect where like a fight happens at the end of the night oh, okay, in yeah. the bar, and then like those people are going to court or whatever, and then you become an accessor, not an accessor, but a witness or yeah. whatever. And um, but I've never actually had to go. There's been a couple times where I've been asked to share my surveillance um, footage from my camera system, which unfortunately is fluky sometimes so I don't have like the view or whatever and I don't have it seems like it always happens in the weird spot yeah it's like like you can kind of see someone's shoulder and not really everything that's going on yeah so I mean it's been that where I've like turned in surveillance footage and stuff but I've never actually had to physically go to court not nothing even close no uh well this one's a funny story that was sent in and it's a picture of a stainless steel muddler yep calling that right yep dildo yeah so uh, apparently, her oldest son uh, was doing the dishwasher, pulled out of the muddler, and said, Mom, why is this in the dishwasher? That's gross. And she says to him, What the fuck do you think this is? And he says, One of those things in your dresser. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. So, not a question, just a fucking funny story. Wow, that's Shit. fucked up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that. The dildo episode. That apparently that's the way to I guess so. Right? Right. Um, <laughs> this is also another picture that was sent in that I actually was going to bring this up earlier. I think it's hysterical and perfect and should be on every menu. And it's the last item on the menu. And it says, my girlfriend is not hungry, 425. Yeah, that went fine. Add, add extra French fries to your entree, fried chicken that. wings, mm-hmm. and that's fried cheese sticks. That's genius. It, it is. is genius. I wish I thought of it first. I got so... I, everyone shared it with It's me. such a good idea. It's like, I can't yeah. even steal that. I yeah. can't even steal it's that. It's like, if I steal it, everyone's going to know I well, stole it. Because exa- it, it went viral. There was the one, too, with the kids. Um, there was the kids' menu, like, I'm not hungry. I don't want that. I don't want anything. And it was mm-hmm. like, I'm not hungry. It was like a hot dog. Or, no, I don't want that. It was like a grilled cheese. And it was the kids' menu was... The name of every item was something a kid would say when you're trying to get your kid to eat at a restaurant. I still feel like that's the girlfriend thing. The girlfriend thing. Yeah, the, gar- the girlfriend thing. Uh, my thing was always like the... Uh, where do you want to go eat? Oh, it doesn't really matter. How about here? Oh, no. Yeah, right. Okay, well, how about here? No, well, where do you want to go? It doesn't matter. Clearly fucking matters. Matter. <laughs> I try Everybody to be the one to defuse that, you know uh, what I mean? But sometimes right. that backfires. Well, I know a great place. I know tons of places we can go. Yeah. And then. Right. 
Solid treatment. Like, All right. Damn. This one is from Jessica Bailey. After a slight fiasco today, I'm making a server's emergency kit to keep in my truck. So far, I have braces. Huh? Uh, braces, a basic first aid kit, hair ties, and hairspray. What else? Pants, pair of pants. Shoes. Yeah. Shoes are that's like key. Sneakers. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pair of pants. Like chicks, like fucking pants split. I've had that happen a couple times where employees were like, you know, they're all wearing yoga pants now and shit. So they uh, they even they even lean into something sharp. Oh, the whole it freaking thing the... goes bing like an elastic band, and there they are with no pants on behind the bar. So extra pair of pants, an apron. Yeah. Yeah. yeah an apron. Uh, Tons of pens. <laughs> yep, yeah, pens, notepads, um, uh, feminine products. Yeah, 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 guess, yeah. That's not in the first aid kit. Yeah, and that sometimes that just kind of happens. Certain places I've worked out, the morning after pill would have been a nice one. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. You should add that to the first aid kit, though. Right. right. I've done a few walk and and I go, I need that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's what she was looking for, but it is now official. So the restaurant industry is a dark, dark place. Yeah. <laughs> Super dark. But that's a pretty good idea. It's like, dark do, that do it's think, like, okay for us. Do you think uh, Do you think every restaurant should have... Every restaurant should have a um, something like that. Not necessarily a first aid kit, but... Survival kit. Survival kit. Yeah. You know, a go bag. Yeah. Yeah, 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 like a something goes underwear. wrong, extra pair of underwear, like when you were in kindergarten. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah like when you're in kindergarten. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was, exactly. Uh, you know what I would do, I would keep like tons of like fresh socks. Socks. Socks is so yeah. major. Yeah, absolutely, especially working a double, dude. Oh. You're like sweating in those fucking things for a whole shift, 100 dude, I go degree so many kitchen. socks, it's yeah. crazy. I'm with you on that. Uh, Jennifer Michael, opening a new restaurant. What is a training tip you wish you had known your entire career? Training tip. Training tip, huh? Wish I had yeah. um, hmm. That's tough, man. I don't really got one. To get someone to learn or to learn myself? I think it's to get people to or learn. Or just how yeah. to, like, how to train, like, how to like train. the key to training people. I mean, again, most of my experience is from retail, so I'll, I'll tell you the one thing I would get a new person, and I would, one of the first things I would always say is if I start talking jargon, stop me. Because it's so easy to fall into the, oh, you know, the POS system or this, that, and you start talking abbreviations right. or lingo, right. and they don't right. want to seem right. stupid. Right. Right. So they're uh-huh, like, okay, uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. You're right, so I'm you're like, right. if I start talking in jar- or jargon, or I worked at Home Depot, or Home Depot lingo, and I, you know, I tell you to go to the cage, and you know what the fucking cage is. Right. <laughs> ask me. <laughs> but it, it also gives him that comfortable, like, oh, I can ask him things, and it right. opens up that, you know. That's a great point. I mean, when, when I mean, I it's so easy for people to go, sure, and then they have to walk off and find someone and be like, what's a cage? Where's the cage? You know? Yeah. And then the, that person going to be like, oh, it's RTV. And it still doesn't make any fucking sense to the person. So I guess, like, don't be afraid to ask questions. You, you always got to ask but questions. Yeah. But, like, you have to, That's like, Jim's almost favorite. give them <laughs> yeah. a, ask questions. like, please ask me questions. Right, right, Cause right. Because I'm not a real person. I have been broken by the system. And I only function in this industry. Right. Because so, some people know and, like, some people, like, really don't. So, like, when I would train like, in the past, I would just... Hey, listen, I want to tell you intelligence, but I'm going to tell I don't know what you know, so I'm going to tell you everything mm-hmm. in descriptive, like, this yeah, is what I, it is. I said that a lot, too. Be like, I'm going to say this, even though I know it doesn't need to be said. Yeah, right. like, just so we're clear. Show up sober for work. Right. <laughs> you know, that kind of, <laughs> right. You know. Like, I'm about to. <laughs> <laughs> got me fucked up, man. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's like one of those, like, I'm going to say it, so in the end, you can't turn on me like, well, you never told me that. Right. Right. Yeah. Because even though they know it, they realize when they fuck up, that's their one defense. Be like, Jim, well, you never didn't say it, couldn't do that. Dude, working People, working oh, for Jim is yeah. very, very. I deal with a lot of that in the beginning. Yeah. And some of it's like I feel it's mind games. You're like, oh yeah. He has, yeah. He has Jedi mind tricks, man. I'm trying to feel you out. Because and... he, he's probably he doing just, the same thing, but he knows you know. But he knows, he knows I know. Like, 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's got to come up with better ideas. But he's going to throw you in there and be like, hey, do this. I'm going to repeat myself. I said do this. If you got any questions, ask him. Yeah. All right. You just told me not to make you repeat yourself. I'm supposed to ask you questions. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. So you're like, what the fuck are right. supposed to do? So a lot of times you're in these conundrums. It's like, uh, you don't want to just wing it because you might fuck this up. Right. If you yeah. fuck it up, you're going to hear it. And then you don't ask the question. Right. You ask him a question and it's just from like, it's just like, but if something it's what, it's what I said. You and I'm like, <laughs> right. so either way, you're like, fuck. Yeah. Be like, I'll just go ask Heather. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used to, dude, I miss, I used to go down to the line, especially when I was in town, and watch him work the line. He doesn't work the line down there. Oh, much man. Anymore. Dude, it was the best seat in the house. Yeah. I would sit right in front of the rotisserie it's chicken right. thing and watch Jim Expo and just coach his guys, and the way he communicated with them, it was the best fucking it, thing. It's... You felt the tension. He's a, this is the thing. He's a people great guy. Like he's he's, no he's bullshit. not a dick. Yeah. He oh. just is direct. Yeah. And Respect. if there are enough direct people in this world, like... You know where you stand with Jim good. Casey. I love it. Yeah. It's like, we hang art for him. Yeah. And the first time we hung art, he goes, I don't like it. And I looked at him like, you're fucking 100% right. It's not right. Yeah. Let's make it right. All right. You know? right yep. But it's no... Don't beat around the bush. Just, yeah. hey. He's, he doesn't have fucking no, time uh, to dick around. No passive aggressors. Just, hey, no. That's yeah. not it. Yep. Right. Try again. And I mean, that's why he's Jim. Yeah, he's yeah. unique cat. That's for sure. Yeah, he's so. a blue-eyed crab. <laughs> 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 All right. All right. I think that's last call. <laughs> last oh, call. Shit. Last call is a portion of the show where we share our final thoughts, be it an upcoming event, anything we have on our mind. It doesn't have to necessarily pertain to what we talked about today or the restaurant industry in general. Um, for my last call today, I really don't have anything. I actually, you know what? I want to thank the New World Tavern for hosting us today. Um, we've recorded, this is our second episode we've recorded today at the New World Tavern. We're in the cavern. They have live music here Friday and Saturday nights. I think sometimes, actually, that Thursdays too. Um, it's a big, open, perfect music venue. They I have. think they also have life drawing here twice a month. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> I used to come to the life drawing. It was like my three-year anniversary of my first life drawing the other day. It was beautiful. But, um, yeah, tons of events they use in this back room. It's a great place, great restaurant. Um, you know, really focused on craft beer, but they also do a lot with live music and art with Anibia. Yep, yep. Um, oh, and amazing. they were nice enough to let us use the cavern today to record this awesome podcast. So, thank you, New World Tavern. Yeah. Thank you very much. We'll pass over to Nick. Nick's here. Um, yeah. I don't know what else I got to really say. Jim, if you're listening, I only had one beer. <laughs> <laughs> For the record. Um, yeah, man. Um, oh, actually, when, uh, when are you putting this out? This uh, next week? This is going to go out like almost a month from now. All right. Well, this is probably irrelevant. So, never mind. I was talking about an event we got next week. I do that shit all the time. It's all good. Mike Wisdom does it, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mike Wisdom would be like, I go to this, this thing <laughs> Thursday. Oh, no, no, no. He'd be yeah, like, tomorrow. what the fuck do you think we do? <laughs> Come see me over here. Uh, well, nah, I they, just want to thank you guys. A, they do run events at Malbar. Yeah. Yeah, we yes, we, we do events. Yeah. Um, I know in the uh, after Labor Day, we're talking about bringing a brunch around. Uh, I'm going to say it's one Sunday a month. We're going to be spending vinyl. But we've got oh, some nice. things working like that. Um, I don't know too much of what was going on, but I know the idea was Marky Mark's Funky Brunch. Uh, <laughs> Shout out to Mark Marinelli. Oh, God. <laughs> That's awesomely terrible. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. But, um, yeah, man. Come check me out at Speedwell and at Malabar. Everything's good. And um, I don't know. Thanks for the opportunity. No appreciate problem, it. Man. Yeah. yeah, thanks, yeah, Nick. I appreciate Thank it, you. man. I'm glad we made it happen. And uh, for my last call, I'm just going to say uh, please check out the other shows on the Nebri Art Podcast Network. We have the Old Colony Cast podcast about everything Plymouth and surrounding areas. Uh, we just interviewed someone from the Wampanoag tribe. That should be coming out. Uh, that probably already came out. No, time. When this, when this goes up, it'll probably... Time, time's weird, man. <laughs> uh, check out the Nebri Art Podcast. We have a bunch of good episodes. We have almost 150 episodes up. Holy shit. Good yeah. Good. And um, we got lots more planned, lots of things going on. And uh, we'll see you at the hometown throwdown at the hey. Mayflower. September 8th. Yeah. Mayflower Brewing. You might and see me there. Cool. Cooking? Like competing? Maybe. Maybe. Nice. Yeah.
hope so. Oh, and just a personal thing. Uh, probably by now, check go to the Spire Performing Arts Center and check out Scallop Johansson. Yeah. Uh, my Scallop sculpture from the Plymouth Scallop Roll. Um, about halfway through painting it, but I figure by the time this goes up, I should be done. Hell yeah. Yeah. So. Scallop Johansson. Scallop Johansson. Hell yeah. Awesome. Trademark. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it, man. All right. Yeah. Well, See? thanks for listening to the Bar Talk podcast. As always, please keep those questions coming. You can find us on Twitter at Bar Talk Cast. You can find us on Facebook at Bar Talk Cast. You can find us on Instagram at Bar Talk Cast. And you can email us at Gmail at Bar Talk Cast at gmail.com. Please keep the questions coming. Thank you for listening once again. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Fish. I've been Ebriot for having us, and thanks, Nick, for joining us this time hey, around. No problem. We will catch you next time. Corn dildo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks for uh, checking out the podcast. And uh, don't forget to check out our other podcasts on the Inebriart Podcast Network. There's uh, the Bar Talk. There's Old Colony Cast. There's, of course, the Inebriart Podcast. And our latest, uh, Retro Redoctopus, a kind of nerd uh, genre podcast that you can check out now, all available on our website at anebri-art.com and uh, pretty much available everywhere that podcasts are available on Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, all those things. And uh, if you don't see it where you're looking, let us know. We'll try to get onto that as well. And you can also email us at anebriart at yahoo.com with your questions, complaints, and suggestions. And uh, also, if you could take the time to rate and review us on iTunes, that would be phenomenal. That helps us get more exposure and bring more of these great podcasts to your ears. And uh, thanks again for listening.